Early September, 1191, the Third Crusade is underway. In command of the Christian army is Richard the Lionheart, the famous warrior king of England. Richard and his crusaders have just captured Acre, the most important port city in Palestine. This is a serious defeat for Saladin, the Sultan of Egypt and Syria, who leads the Muslim effort against the Crusade. Saladin has the advantage of numbers, leading a large coalition drawn from all across his vast domain. Richard's army is far smaller, but the King of England is a formidable commander and inspires confidence and courage in his men. Now, with Acre secure, Richard is advancing south, but Saladin is determined to stop Richard's progress. The Sultan intends to force a battle near the castle of Arsuf. With his superior numbers, Saladin is confident that he can achieve victory. Will Richard and his knights be ready? With the recapture of Acre, the Third Crusade achieved a critical success. Acre had served Saladin as one of his key garrisons and arms depots. With Acre as a base, Richard the Lionheart was determined to further his conquests. After consulting with the Knights Templar and the Knights Hospitaller, the king decided to march his army south along the Palestinian coast, reoccupying the forts and towns along the way. Richard's goal at this point was Jaffa, the port city closest to Jerusalem, and another crucial regional stronghold. As Richard marched out of Acre, Saladin gathered his forces, determined to halt the Lionheart's advance. Richard's route along the coast provided several advantages. Using his fleet, Richard could supply his army throughout the march. Also, the sea itself protected the army's right flank and reduced the advantage of Saladin's numbers, since the Muslims could only attack the Christians from the left. On August 22, the Christians began the grueling march. The weather was hot, the terrain treacherous. Saladin's Turkish horse archers harassed the Christian column with sudden bursts of arrows, wounding or killing horses as well as men. But Richard maintained strict discipline. The army's formation was impeccable and advanced down the coast intact, despite harassment from Saladin's forces. Finally, on the morning of September 7, the Christian army emerged from a wooded region north of Arsuf. Richard knew that Saladin would likely try to force a battle, for the Sultan had been summoning forces from across Egypt and Syria. At dawn, the Christians drew toward Arsuf, arranged in twelve squadrons, with the Templars leading the vanguard and the Hospitallers holding the rearguard. In total, Richard had about 10,000 infantry and around 1,200 heavy cavalry for a total of roughly 11 to 12,000 men. Saladin's army numbered at least twice that amount at around 25,000. As the Crusaders emerged from the woods, Saladin launched part of his army in attack while keeping some forces in reserve. Saladin's chronicler and biographer Ibn Shaddad says, The enemy were tightly beset and the fighting was fierce and blazed into flame on both sides. The enemy quickened their march in the hope of reaching the site where they could camp. Their situation became serious and the noose about them tightened while the Sultan was moving between the left wing and the right wing, urging the men on in the holy war. The Gesta Regis Riccardi, an eyewitness account of the Third Crusade from Richard's camp, records how essential those valiant crossbowmen and archers were that day. Those absolutely inflexible men-at-arms who brought up the rear of the army drove back the relentless Turks as best they could with a continuous volley of shots. Richard had arranged his infantry, including his archers, so that they marched alongside the cavalry, protecting the horses from enemy arrows. Nevertheless, the Gesta author says that the Christians were so hemmed in by Saladin's attacks that they could see nothing but the sky and the enemy. Some crossbowmen walked backward as the Christians advanced so that they could maintain the marching order while holding back the Turks. The effectiveness of the Crusaders' marching order caused the Muslims to attack at closer and closer range. Now, the Turks weren't just using their bows, but taking out their lances for more direct attacks. In the rearguard, the Hospitallers were particularly hard-pressed by these attacks. The Hospitallers requested permission to give charge, but the king refused. 
In fact, the increasing boldness of the Saracen attacks played into Richard's plan. The Lionheart hoped to force Saladin to fully commit his army to close quarter fighting so that the Christians could launch a decisive charge that would shatter the Saracen ranks. As Saladin pressed the attack, Richard's column continued to advance. This prompted bolder and bolder attacks from the Muslims. The chronicler Ibn al-Athir says that many Saracen troops had by now taken a position close to the action, and the Gesta says that the Christians noticed that many of the Turkish cavalrymen had now dismounted in an effort to shoot their arrows more accurately. It was at this moment that the Crusaders finally gave charge. Ibn Shaddad describes his experience of this event with riveting detail. Then their cavalry massed together and agreed on a charge. I saw them grouped together in the middle of the foot soldiers. They took their lances and gave a shout as one man. The infantry opened gaps for them and they charged in unison along their whole line. Our men gave way before them. It happened that I was in the center, which took to wholesale flight. My intention was to join the left wing since it was nearer to me. I reached it after it had been broken utterly, so I thought to join the right wing, but then I saw that it had fled more calamitously than all the rest. Ibn Shaddad fled to where Saladin was positioned with his bodyguard. He writes, The Sultan stood among them while men were fleeing on all sides, but he was commanding the drummers to beat their drums without stopping. He ordered the men to rally to him, but they were all fleeing around him. The Muslims were in a complete rout. Ibn Shaddad tells us that the Christians charged in a total of three different waves. These charges were coordinated using signals from Richard's trumpeters. In the initial charge, the Muslims suffered serious casualties, and with each additional charge, Saladin's army was further devastated. The Christian infantry moved up behind the knights, finishing off wounded or fleeing enemy troops. King Richard personally took part in the fighting, charging at the forefront of his cavalry. The Gesta Regis Riccardi dramatically recounts the king's conduct. King Richard pursued the Turks with singular ferocity, fell upon them and scattered them across the ground. No one escaped when his sword made contact with them. Wherever he went, his brandished sword cleared a wide path on all sides. Continuing his advance with untiring sword strokes, he cut down the enemy as if he were reaping the harvest with a sickle, so that the corpses of Saracens he had killed covered the ground everywhere. Saladin's nephew, Taki al-Din, rallied some of the Muslims in an attempt to reverse the situation, but when Richard led his third and final charge, the Crusaders devastated Taki al-Din's cavalry. At this point, the victory was sealed. Richard and his knights had defeated Saladin's army. The Crusaders were triumphant. Saladin himself retreated with his bodyguard into the wooded hills, where the survivors of his army rallied. Meanwhile, the victorious Christians occupied Arsuf. The Battle of Arsuf was a critical moment in the Third Crusade. Saladin endured horrible casualties, with around half of his army being slain. However, his army was not fully destroyed, and he was able to rally the survivors, which numbered around half his original force, at a safe point in the hills. Here, Ibn Shaddad tells us that Saladin was inconsolable after his defeat, refusing to eat or even speak much to anyone. Christian casualties were light, but the army was particularly moved by the loss of James of Avena, a knight well-loved by his comrades who had shown much bravery during the battle. The Templars and the Hospitallers searched the battlefield, and when they found James's body, they carried it carefully to Arsuf. Here, the fallen knight was buried, with Richard himself assisting in the funerary rites. The battle secured Christian control of the coastal plain, and allowed the Crusaders to go on to occupy the port city of Jaffa. From here to Acre, Richard now ruled a considerable chunk of Palestine. What did you say? I want to hear it again before it fades. To learn more about Richard the Lionheart, Saladin, and the Third Crusade, check out our video on why the Third Crusade was successful linked right now on your screen and in the description below. Passing by.